All right, this here is a brand spanking new Harley Benton backer. Rick and Benton? Something like that. This one showed up in the jam room. Somebody wants to be Cliff or Lemmy or something, and I'm here for it. Uh, I played this one recently in our Black Sabbath jam night, which happens on Fridays. And uh, I love the tone. The tone is like wide and fat and low. Really cool. Sounds great. Um, playing, it's a different animal altogether. Uh, really uncomfortable. The strings are so high. When I was playing on the first strings, and they're really rough too. Um, when I was playing up here, um, right behind my finger here, would, was getting cut by the A string. <laughs> and uh, just to show you how high the action is here, this is three pennies. And that fits under there loosely, three pennies. Um, this edge is a little tighter. <laughs> but still, that's pretty high action. Um, the bridge on this side looks as low as it's going to go. On this side, it's a little higher. It might be able to come down. Um, but also, there's a little bow in the neck. There's huge relief in this neck. I want to take that out. And, uh, yeah, we'll put some new strings on. It's something that's a little more comfortable. These strings are, like, thick and heavy and uh, rough. Right? <laughs> I think I could saw a piece of wood with these things. But, anyway, let's get you set up. We'll start going through it. Let's see how it functions. All works great. Alright, just to give you an idea of how high this action is, the highest part on my uh, string gauge here is 3.5 millimeter, and you can see at least another millimeter above that, so it's got to be 4.5-5 millimeters in height. That's not good. Um, yeah, uh, I need a picture of this one. Normally with some brand new strings like this, I might try to keep them for something else, but these are the most uncomfortable strings I think I've ever played. So how flat do you think the frets are on a brand new Harley Rick and Benton? Let's take a look. That one's a little wobbly. How weird is that? It's the second up and the second back. <laughs> Those two are a little bit bad. Um, yeah. Don't know if I want to do the whole full tape on those. Uh, might as well, huh?
All right, so I went through the frets. They're nice and level now. Uh, it was the second one here and the second one here. Wild. Uh, oiled up the fretboard, soaked that right on in, and just checked the truss rod to see where we were at with that, and it's loose. What's up with that? Who sends out a loose truss rod? No wonder it had such a bow. You know, I'm like, I'm of the thinking that if you buy an instrument, and this wasn't an expensive instrument, but for the price of it, you should be able to play it, right? Um, fortunately, you know, in our group of musicians, there's myself and a couple other guys that can that can go through a guitar and get it working pretty good. But like, I'm imagining, like, say a parent buys this for their kid. The kid only wants to play bass. They get this, and and how long are they going to play that? I mean, I've played guitar for 30 years played bass for you know in between there and uh, I can imagine if, if my fingers hurt that bad after playing one song you know that's uh, <laughs> that's not good so this is some bad quality control there Harley Benton so I'm a big fan of the DR coded strings I really like the feel of them uh, the tone of them all that. I usually use the black ones because we have black bases at the jam room. Um, I've used the red and yellow ones on the X-Man's base, but uh, found these white ones. I didn't even know that they made these, but uh, Big Hucklebuck suggested I get these for it instead of black ones, so we'll try them out. Here they go. Yeah, they are white. little uh, ferrules out here I guess is that what you'd call them something like that fall on me All right, so I tune the strings up, and just um, putting lighter strings on here actually brought it down about a millimeter and a half. Um, still, there's a little bow here. I'll try to take that out. All right, I want to start with about a quarter turn. Still got about a millimeter of uh, of height there. Let's do another uh, quarter turn. Uh, it's a little bit closer. I want some relief in there, but I don't want a huge dip, you know. One more quarter. Let's try it. Okay. 
hair more. See about some bridge height down here if we can get this a little lower. Doesn't sound too bad. Don't ask me to play Seinfeld. And that was just going through the PV Rage here, of course, which isn't a bass amp, but I can tell if it makes some noise. But yeah, I'm liking everything about that so far. Sounds much better. Put that truss rod cover back on. That'll do pig. That's what I'm calling this guitar from now on. That'll do pig. Um, I mean, it's a decent bass. The finish is beautiful. The hardware seems uh, okay. Tone was really good, but just that playability issue with the neck was crazy. I mean, they could have just done a couple tweaks right here, and the playability would have been great right out of the box. Um, and I feel bad for anybody who would be getting something like this you know, as a beginner and trying to learn how to play and cutting up your fingers on the, the, the chainsaw blade strings that they put on it. Um, I mean, you know, your fingers are supposed to bleed when you first start playing guitar, but not on the first song, you know? So, I'm going to get this one back to the jam room. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, so I want to thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up for filming it for you. We'll talk again soon. <laughs>